All right, now we get into the talk story part of the evening where we <clears throat> talk about Hawaiian culture, history, legend, language, healing, and the philosophy that we call Huna, based on seven ideas about life, that the world is what you think it is, there are no limits, energy flows where attention goes, now is the moment of power, to love is to be happy with, all power comes from within, and effectiveness is the measure of truth. We talk about all these things in the way that I was brought up in this knowledge, which is partly by storytelling, partly by question and answer. So we're going to start off with a story, old Hawaiian legend, uh, related mainly to this island. The legend that we're going to talk about is, has many variations, so different storytellers have told and written down different versions of this. And I've looked at all the different ones and, you know, it's kind of thing. The thing we learn first sometimes is the thing we treasure most, no matter what. So I'm going to give the version that I learned most, uh, that I learned first. Uh, and which is very close, very close to a version by uh, Samuel Kamakau, who was one of the early writers. But this concerns a hero called Mo'i Keha. Now, let me tell you about his name first. Uh, well, who he was, he was one of the great kings of Kauai, but not always a king. Mo'i Keha, there's even some question about whether that's really his name or not. I mean, the spelling is pretty much correct, but the particular Hawaiian pronunciation is, is not certain. But when I've looked this up, you know, there's some people, for instance, somebody actually named Stokes, who says that uh, the word Mo'i, meaning king, uh, didn't come into any use. It wasn't in print anywhere until 1832. Therefore, it had to be a modern word. That's not necessarily so. But if we look at the meaning together, if we say Mo'i Keha, it means majestic ruler or majestic king. And it fits beautifully. If we look at the way it's usually spelled, Moikeha, it means majestic threadfish. Well, that just doesn't quite do it. Uh, or another meaning of the word Moi, majestic young taro plant. Well, probably his name was Moikeha, because that means majestic ruler or majestic leader or majestic king. Um, he came from Tahiti. In Tahiti, he was originally married to a woman named Kapo. Uh, it's a famous name as one of the goddesses of, of Hawaii, but uh, this was supposed to have started in Tahiti and that was his wife's name. But he left there to go adventuring and he uh, as he was leaving, he was sailing through the islands of Tahiti, uh, picking up passengers on the way. And uh, one of the people who wanted to go with, with, with him was a relative who was also a kahuna and a master of winds. And so uh, as Moikeha is sailing past the island where this person lived, his name was Laoma'oma'o. And as he's sailing past the island where this kahuna lived, uh, the island, sh the kahuna shouted out from the cliffs, you know, stop so I can go with you. And Mo'i Keha said, if you're a kahuna, find your own way onto my canoe. And so much to many people's surprise in the canoe, why he levitated from the cliff over through the air and landed <clears throat> in the back part of the canoe. And so that proved his power, and so he was brought along on the voyage, which was a good thing, because like I said, he was a master of the winds. And Hawaiian thought, you find this in a number of different legends, they talk about the gourd of winds. The idea was that they kept somebody who was a master, would keep the winds in a gourd, and they would be able to call out the different winds at will. And so this was a wind master. Uh, also known uh, as a navigator. But uh, so they made it all the way up into the islands 
had various adventures in different places. He stopped for a while on the big island and uh, fell in love with the wife of a chief there, Olopana. Uh, the wife was Luukia, beautiful but headstrong young woman. But anyway, she and Mo'i Keha were lovers for a while. And Olopana, you know, Mo'i Keha was a handsome man. He was a good at all the warrior skills. He was a great surfer. He was big and tall. And Olopana liked him a lot as a friend. And so he didn't mind that his wife and this man were lovers. If a person were your friend or you really liked them in the old days of Hawaii, why, then that was not a big deal. Uh, if you didn't like them, well, then it was a big deal, okay? But he did like him, so they did that. However, there was another man who was jealous, Mua, and he really liked Olopana's wife, too. So uh, when they had a big contest, there was some big festival and sports activities and things, three spear throwing, running, wrestling, boxing. They had wrestling and boxing in old Hawaii. And... So Mo E. Keha was out there and leading the cheers for all of the winners, but a little too far away from Mua and Luukia to hear him. And you know, Luukia thought she was in love with him, but then she says, oh, listen to him leading the cheers. And Mua said, no, no, he's actually insulting you. And she said, what? He said, that's right. So she got so angry, she believed that, it was a total lie, but she believed it and got so mad, she went home and she had her sisters wrap her whole private section of her body in cords, tying very secret knots so the ends were hidden and you could not figure out how to untie it. And she stayed like that. When Mo E. Keha came to make love to her, he found her all wrapped up. He says, okay, what's, what are you unhappy about? What have I done? She wouldn't speak to him. So he said, come on, you know, let me know at least. She wouldn't talk to him. Three days he tried to get her to talk to him. Finally, he said, hey, I don't need this. I'm out of here. In Hawaiian, of course. Uh, and so off he took and made his way finally with his with his uh, crew members and got all the way over here to Kauai. Now, sometimes you'll hear me say Kauai and sometimes you'll hear me say Kauai. Uh, today, the modern form of that is Kauai. So I will, because I've learned Hawaiian in modern times, I'll sometimes fall into that. But in my family and among a lot of the older uh, Hawaiians on this island, they call it Kauai without the Akina. Okay, so. You'll hear it pronounced both ways, and I'll probably pronounce it both ways. So anyway, he makes it here, lands on the beach, and uh, meets the chief of the king of the island at that time, whose name was Puna. Now, Puna also is a word for the southeast area, district, of every island. It's basically called Puna. It's still called Puna on the big island. But the whole area of Lihue... Uh, was originally called, in this area, was all Puna at one time. But the name of the chief in the story is Puna. And uh, so he's very impressed also with Mo'i Keha, who, who uh, gives his genealogy, and that's the way, you, you know, if you're a high chief, landed on a strange island, you had to tell who you were. And so you, the way you told who you were were who your ancestors were. And so they would always look, not just for a long list of things, but to see whether there were any ties that they could connect to. It's something like you meet somebody and you say, well, where are you from? I'm from here. Well, do you know so-and-so? Uh, no, but I know so-and-so's friend. Oh, and then there's a connection. So they would listen carefully to the genealogies to see if they could find connections. So anyway, apparently they found one, but not quite good enough. Because this was a time, another time of contests. Puna had the most beautiful daughter. Now, there's different names for the daughters in the different tales, but one of the names is Hina. So that's one of the one we'll use. And Hina had a sister. 
And, uh, but Hina was really beautiful, and Mo'i Keha really liked her. Okay? And they liked, she and her sister liked him. Uh, but uh, Puna said, well, we're going to have a contest because there's other chiefs that also want to marry my daughter. So you're going to have to sail to a sacred island, Kaula, on the other side of Ni'ihau. And the first one to sail there and pick up a token that I have left there, which would be a rock or, or some image or something like that, usually an image, and bring it back, that's the one who shall have my daughter. Okay? If they want you. Okay? So, Mo'i Keha got in his sailing canoe with his crewman, La'a Ma'o Ma'o, with the gourd of winds. And so as they sailed around the southern end of Kauai and over toward Ni'ihau, whenever the wind started to falter or come from the wrong direction, La'a Ma'o Ma'o would pull out the right wind, and that would sail them further in front of everybody. And he did that all the way. Every time he had to, he would pull out the wind that would keep them going faster or in the best direction. And they finally made him to Ka'ula. Ka'ula is like a great big rock that sticks out of the ocean. You can see it from Ni'ihau, but you can't see it from, from Kauai. Uh, anyway, they made it over there. They picked up the image, sailed their way back, way ahead of everybody else. So the king says, Puna, you're in the running. Now we'll see which one of my daughters you'll marry, because it depends on the daughters. Both daughters wanted to marry him. So, in good Hawaiian style, both daughters say, look, we love each other, and we love him, let's both marry him. And that's what they did. And according to the original story that I heard, they married, and they had 12 children, which is a symbolic number. But one of the eldest of the children was Kila, who had all the qualities that his father did. But as time passed, Puna passed away, Mo'ikeha became the king of Kauai. And it was one of those golden age times in Hawaiian history of peace and plenty on these islands. And so with these children, he sent uh, Kila back home to Tahiti to uh, take care of some business and come back. And then finally they lived happily ever after on this island. When Mo'ikeha died, Kila took over as the king of Kauai, and he's along one of the genealogy lines of the kings of this island. Okay. So there's a story of Mo'i Kehoe.